Okay, good morning. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start. Okay, we're looking at Mark chapter 4. And uh, so we, um, we read about the, the Lord Jesus. Um, Mark chapter... Yeah. Um, so here in this uh, Mark chapter 4, we, it's a, we read about the parable of the sower and so on. And um, at the end of it, the Lord Jesus, um, after explaining the parable of the sower, okay, uh, after explaining the, the significance of the seed that is sown, etc., um, in verse twenty-four, okay, uh, verse twenty-three and twenty-four, okay, in verse twenty-three says, "If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured." To you and to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to him, more will be given, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Right? So just uh, want to focus our attention on verse 24. It says, Take heed what you hear. Okay, what is it that you're taking in? And with the same measure that you use, right? Same uh measuring quantity or you know what is it that you use in order to take right, the same measure that you use it will be measured to you okay so we see a, a important principle here it says uh, the lord also after that saying that if you you know he who has more will be given so one is what is it that you are hearing you know, hearing not just you know physically but what is it that you're receiving okay into your heart uh, second thing is the same measure that you use. Okay, so measure can be okay. In in practical, simple terms, it just means what kind of vessel that you use in order to collect something, right? The same measure that you use, it'll be measured to you. So, which means that whatever effort, the level of hunger, the the uh, you know the the uh, extent to which we are open uh, to receive, right? The same measure that you use, it will be measured to you. So the Lord is saying, it's it's up to you, right? For you to receive, it's up to you. What measure are you using? Now, how hungry are you? How desperate are you? Because he's not putting a limit because he's an infinite God. But he's saying that the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Okay, so, um, so even as we go through this week or even today, you know, we can think about that. You know, what measure am I actually carrying? Okay, what is it? What is the size of the, I don't know, the vessel or whatever that I'm, you know, to receive? Um, because the Lord is not putting any um, limit on it. He's just left it to you. You know, what is the measure that I'm carrying when I go to the presence of God, when I sit with Him um, to read the Word, uh, when I pray? What is the measure that I'm carrying? Okay, so if we would change our measure, then what will be? What we will receive, what is measured to us, will also change. Right? So the question is, you know, do I need to change the measure of what I'm taking, what I'm carrying? Uh, am I satisfied with the kind of measure that I'm carrying? So that am I satisfied with uh, what is measured to me, what I'm receiving? Or do I need to change the measure of what I'm carrying? Right? Okay, so let's pray. Let's just ask the Lord to speak to us. Father God, we, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this exhortation, Lord, that uh, the measure that we use, Lord, the same measure, it will be measured to us, Father God. And so uh, we thank you, Lord, that you've uh, given us, Master, you've given us the onus. You've put the Lord onus on us, Lord. Uh, the same measure that we use, it will be measured to us. And Father God, we thank you that, uh, Lord, we can really um, look into our lives and see whether we need to change the measure. If there's any change, any um, adjustment that we need to make in the way we are approaching, Father God, because you are not placing any limit. You're not withholding anything, God, but you are asking that the, that we need to, Lord, with whatever measure we, we come to your presence, oh God, that you will pour out, you will pour in. And so, Master, we, we just pray this morning that uh, you will enable us to increase. You will enable us to change the kind of the measure that we are using. Yes, the, the hunger level, Father God, the responsiveness to your word, 
Lord, the sensitivity to the leading of your Holy Spirit, O oh Father God, the, the extent to which we are surrendered and yielded, Lord, to you, Lord. Master, we even as we come, Lord, we pray that if you need to make any adjustments, you will enable us by your Holy Spirit. And so that, Lord, we can receive all that you, you're pouring out, Father God. And, um, and Father God, yes, Master, I pray that it will be a... Uh, uh, we, we are also asked that you would expand our capacity to receive from you, Jesus. Expand our cap capacity, Lord. Let our spirit, O oh Father God, the way you created, O oh God, to, uh, to receive from you, Father God. Lord, yes, Master, as deep calls unto deep, O oh Father God, we call unto you. And Lord, even as you pour out, Lord, we want to receive, Master, from your work, Lord, from the work of your spirit, O oh God. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so how's it going, leadership? <laughs> going okay. Uh, you know, you notice that there's a lot of theory at times, right? Um, like we looked at uh, how we need to, uh, what we need to look for in raising up leaders. Okay, a lot of things um, might be, you know, very theoretical, um, but. Uh, these are things that we can actually put into practice. And it seems theoretical at times because uh, maybe we are not at that place of raising up leaders. Maybe, you know. So it seems like, okay, uh, I will cross the bridge when it comes. You know, so Sometimes we think, okay, it's not happening in my life, so we'll, let's see. But the thing is that, um, you know, since each one of us is a person of influence, right? each one of us, uh, God has given us, um, the ability to influence others is called us to be salt and light. So, um, you know, we can look, look, look and see, okay, who is it that the Lord has placed in our lives? It could be one person, it could be many, right? Whom, whom the, whom we, who is tied to our lives, whom we can make a difference and uh, we can actually um, uh, build that person up in all these areas. And also, you know, all the while taking care that we build ourselves up. In all these areas that we saw. Okay, so uh, last class we looked at um, the community, how, uh, you know, looking at the church in Jerusalem, and uh, we looked at a few things. You can read through it, right? So today we are going to look at, um, you know, as we can look at the section of leading through time, okay? leading over a period of time, uh, one important aspect is leading through transitions, right? So what is this? What is a transition? Change. Yeah. So the, uh, when we look at transition, it means uh, change from one state to another state, right? From one season to another, maybe, right? And and bridging that, right? So uh, a transition is that. So in leadership, as we lead, there are transitions that we need to. Uh, we need to be aware of, and which means that we need to be prepared to lead through those seasons of transitions. Okay, and when one very um, uh, classic example that we see in the word is Joshua chapter one, where Moses is no longer leader, and Joshua steps in to be the leader. Okay, so he leads the people, uh, the the Israelites in that transition. So uh, the, so for the Israelites, it was a transition because there was a change in leadership. For Joshua himself, it was a transition because now from being a person who was being prepared for leadership, from being a person who was always um, you know, uh, following the instructions of Moses, maybe, here he was you know, now shouldering the huge responsibility of leading the Israelites, right? So we see that uh, you know that's that's a, so here in this in this case we see that transition. It was a prepared transition, right? Um, if you see that Lord has already prepared uh, Moses for it, He had already spoken to uh, Moses to say, you know, you you lay hands on them, you you appoint him as a leader in the you know in in, in front of all the congregation and so on. So. Um, so we see it was a kind of a prepared thing, and then you know there was, and and then he we became a leader. But we see that um, in Joshua chapter one, we see that um, the Lord is having this conversation with Joshua, and he says, "Okay, this is what you need to do." He's instructing him, 
and he also tells him you know be strong be courageous right um, and he gives him that instruction of this book of law you know should not depart from your mouth all that and uh, the people also echo the same thing so it's a very positive thing that happens okay here is uh, joshua being appointed as a leader and then he is the lord is also encouraging him the people are also saying you know uh, we will do we will be with you right only be strong and courageous the very instruction that the lord gives they also uh, you know echo the same thing you know be strong be courageous okay um what if there are transitions where it's unexpected okay so such things also happen you know whether it's a church whether it's a ministry where we are totally you know seeming unprepared for it you know it was something sudden like maybe the passing away of a leader or maybe the leader who was there needed to be moved out for whatever reason like right? maybe there's a moral failure maybe there is a financial you know some some failure you know on on the part of the leader and the leader had to step down and so um, there is a transition right so um, so we as leaders we need to lead through these seasons okay so uh, and how we lead through the transition with with sensitivity with wisdom um will ensure the will ensure the success of you know the journey of the ministry okay whether it's a church so we, because if you don't handle the transition well then it can destroy a lot of things whatever was built up through the years right okay so here are some practical things to go through challenging transitions right if it's a if it's a prepared transition uh, then it's you know the previous things that we saw you know how this different stages initial stage the preparatory stage you know the maturity stage and so on so that would apply but if it is a unplanned sudden transition a challenging one then here are some practical things to keep in mind okay the first thing is understand that okay there is there will be some kind of a turbulence or some kind of a disturbance right because of the transition like the leader who is leading so far is not there and now you have to step in and you have to lead okay what are some things that could happen where people are suddenly seeing you as a leader and maybe they are happy maybe some of them are not right maybe uh, you know they're still grappling with this whole thing you know you know maybe why this leader is not there why the one who was leading is not there or maybe they're grappling with you know whatever reason for which the re he's not there he or she is not there they're going through that right uh, what happened why you know a lot of questions and um, and so on so there is some kind of a you know uh, emotionally there is a turbulent kind of a, like a stormy kind of a uh, season right so the first thing is not to uh, you know not to give in to whatever that disturbance is uh, not to yield to that but to keep the focus on the lord during that time right knowing fully well that well this has happened we we yes you know for x y z reason it has happened but um i'm going to keep my eyes on the lord because he is bigger than this bigger than the problem that we're going through maybe that we have to navigate as a team as a ministry as a church right so we're going to keep our eyes on the lord okay second thing now uh, like psalm 93 psalm says the lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters is talking about the storm is talking about the floods and he saying the lord on high is mighty okay the second one is to make decisions out of a pure and sincere heart okay so what happens is that uh, you know certain decisions maybe have to be made okay um certain uh, difficult decisions difficult choices right maybe it could it could even be shutting down of a church right uh, because of whatever you know the leader had done and it could be shutting down of a church it could be you know uh, maybe removal of certain people in leadership position okay so make every decision out of a good and sincere heart right so you're looking at the overall picture there's no partiality you know you're doing it with dignity 
um, you know, not breaking the person, all that. So do it with a good and sincere heart. That's the thing. We need to guard our heart, you know, because these are moments when we could get angry, disappointed, and, uh, you know, sometimes bitter with people. You know, why, why did this happen? So, you know, maybe, you know, you just want to punish or take back, um, you know, because you've invested so much in, in the lives of people and this has happened and maybe you you know, you just want to, um, you know, um, give vent to your anger and so on. But the thing is, this is not the time. This is never the time. It is, it is to guard our heart and to make decisions out of a pure and sincere heart. Second thing is, yes, guarding our heart, you know. Uh, because there could be fear, there could be hurt, there could be, you know, uh, the temptation to criticize the person, uh, the temptation to, you know, put all the blame on that person, maybe, right? So this is the time to guard our heart, okay? Uh, and sometimes some of those decisions that we take, like we may not be able to explain to each and every one. Maybe you're able to explain to the, the core team, okay, this is what and uh, talk about the negatives of that person or the pro you know the extent to which the the damages were done with the core team but you may you don't want to share that with each and every person right um and it looked like one list of negatives okay this is what the person did this is what the person did and you don't want to do that right you want to honor the person as well and you want to let the person leave with dignity so um so Maybe the others are, you know, looking at, um, you know, looking at you and saying, "Okay, this is a wrong decision. You, know, you, you should not have done that. I think you are wrong in letting, you know, removing this person from leadership." And so, you know, in guarding your heart, and maybe in, in sometimes it's a difficult position because you want to protect the person who's leaving also, right? Like you want to protect the dignity of the person and honor of the person who's leading leaving. You just want to do do it in a good way, um, and then you are being perceived as a wrongdoer. In the sense, other persons, people are saying, you know, I think it's the wrong choice, wrong decision. Why uh, you're not able to explain fully to each and every person, but to the team you can, right? So be willing to be perceived as a wrongdoer. Okay, so it's a tough thing, right? Uh, it's a difficult thing when you lead through a transition. Leave the vindication to God. You know, if the other person is saying all kinds of things uh, about you and about the ministry and you know which is not true right so you don't have to get into a match like you know um, like sometimes what happens on social media online you know we see one person is uh, saying all kinds of things against the person and the other person is also saying all kinds of things about the ministry and in between you know, people are people who do not know the Lord are saying, "Okay, these Christians are like this. And this is what happens." And and uh, others who are believers are also, you know, confused and hurt, and all that is happening. So we don't have to get into that. Right? Okay. Third thing: stay focused on the journey that is ahead. Okay. So what is the big vision, big picture? What has the Lord called us to do? Okay. So even during that transition, don't make the transition the main issue. Okay, so yes, there is a change uh, in maybe leadership. There is a change in the way we are doing ministry. Maybe there is a change in you know cutting down on ministry or whatever it is. Don't make that the big issue. That has to be communicated. That has to be shared. But let the, that not be the main thing, you know, every day or every week, right? While that is addressed and we are journeying through it, um, focus on what is ahead. Like focus on the big picture. Right. Um, then keep the core people together. We're talking about the core team, talking about the main team or the leadership. Um, we need to communicate. Okay. We need to communicate why things went wrong. We need to share, um, you know, what what steps are being taken, and that has to be very clear, clearly mentioned. You know, things like why, what, how, etc. Uh, it has to so that the team needs to know they might have questions they might have certain you know certain things they uh, maybe they don't understand and maybe there are certain things that they're not agreeing with right but that has to be made clear and that time of discussion has to be there 
Okay, we're talking about the the, the team which is closest, right? Uh, the core team or the the leadership team and so on. So uh, the core needs to be together, and uh, you know, one outcome of that will be that the core team will be able to explain to their teams and to others in a very clear manner. Okay, otherwise. Um, it can be a very confused thing that goes out. Uh, it can be a lot of lot more confusion um, than what is already present there. Okay. Sixthly, convey a singular message. Like, don't deviate from the truth. Okay. So we're not talking about changing, you know, the truth or diluting the truth. So whatever is being spoken, let it be the truth. Right. Let it be the. Uh, non-contradictory meaning you know one day we say something second day we say something opposite of that okay so convey that same message and let it be the truth right uncompromised undiluted truth okay um appoint the right people to lead so let's say there is a you know the leadership of a particular department of a ministry now is not there appoint the right people Otherwise, you as a leader, for a season, you may have to step in and take that extra load. Okay, now that's a difficult part, right? Because there is a vacuum there and you may have to step in and take the load if the right person is not there. If you feel that, okay, um, nobody's ready or people who are there or also may not be able to take that responsibility, then one has to step in and take that responsibility. Okay. Um, address and answer questions privately sufficiently. You know, there may be questions, maybe we're talking about a church ministry. There may be questions from, you know, folks. Uh, so address that, address those questions. Maybe you can ask people to write to you, speak to you. Uh, maybe there can be a, you know, even a frequently asked questions page, right? You can send it out or an email. You know, these are some questions that you might have. And these are some answers, you know, in an in addition to that, if there are clarifications, you know, this is how you can get those answers. This is how you can get those clarifications. Okay, um, to do that, right? then wait for things to settle down before introducing new things. Now, now, what is the state of mind of the of the everyone involved? It could be a state of unrest. It could be a state of, you know, uh, not sure of things, how things are going to happen, how things are. Um, going to, uh, you know, in the next few steps and how things will be. Therefore, one needs to not introduce new changes and new things. Okay. Because nobody's in a, in a frame of mind to receive that. Okay? Uh, everybody wants to see the stability and, uh, and how they want to see, okay, how things are going to be consistent before one is able to receive new direction or new changes or you know, introducing new things to be done so uh, to introduce new things that is not the uh, that is not the right time appropriate time okay okay then uh, lastly commit your reputation into god's hands right uh, maybe there could be uh, you know because you know things could be said about uh, about us things could be uh, discussed about us and uh, which need not be necessarily right but then you commit your reputation to God's hands know that he's the vindicator he will pay through you know but you're doing everything right you know you're doing the other things right it's not like you're not communicating you're not answering the questions you're not clarifying things you're not leading doing everything all the other things and you are coming you know committing your reputation while you do all these things, while you focus on God, um, you, focus, you know, committing that to God's hands. Okay. Okay. Any questions? We looked at 10 things. Now I know that it is very futuristic, right? Maybe some things, um, you know, we have not seen, or maybe there are some things we have, you know, we, we have also. Um, any questions on this? Anything at all? Um, okay. Okay.
Okay. Now, um, so why are we looking at this? Because it's a it's a very real scenario. Okay. It it could uh, it could happen, and we see a lot of it. You know, we read a lot of it happening. Uh, you know, in today's church and and ministries and so on, and uh, uh, and we need to have the wisdom and the knowledge to handle it in the right way possible. Okay. Yeah. Anything at all? No. Okay. Do you have a question? Okay. Okay. So we we uh, if there are no questions, we'll uh, kind of shift direction a little bit and um, talk about uh, productivity or fruitfulness you know the bible talks about fruitfulness so um, you know just that's another word for being productive or being useful right um, so personally as leaders um, we need to be fruitful you know the expectation is that we, we be fruitful okay john chapter 15 we see the Lord saying, I'm the vine, and the Father is the vine dresser. And he's talking about every branch, that we are branches connected to the vine. And what is the Father coming to see? He's coming to see fruit. Okay, which means that, uh, so what does fruit mean? In this case. The result, okay. Okay, so what? Mm. So it, it is it is various areas, right? You know, first and foremost, it's Christ likeness, character. Okay. So you're connected to the vine and you're the branch. And what is the fruit, yeah, fruit that you're bringing out? What is the life that you're living? So if you look at it, it's the very life, how we live our life. It is uh, it goes beyond just so some momentary events right it goes it's a, it's it's our life entire life how we live our life what is happening with our life right so if you look at it if you go through the passage he says that okay you abide i mean you stay i stay in you etc without me you can do nothing right but he also says that um, in verse 2 every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes. Okay, so what is this pruning? Shaping. Cutting, shaping, okay. huh? Molding. But how do you mold a plant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, um, but I get your idea. Is you're saying okay, bringing some change, huh? Re, reshaping. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, what was dry things? Okay. Okay, I think you should there's no mic. Okay. So yeah, what was dry, you take it out. Okay, so okay, so when you take out what is dry, then it becomes more fruitful, is it? I'm not a gardener, so I just asking. Yeah? Okay. Okay, let's hear from the expert. Okay. <laughs> That's the dry one. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So whatever is dry, you you trim it, you cut it, and so whatever is inhibiting the fruit bearing, it actually you know it's it's taken out and. It, I also read somewhere that um, you know if 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 the pruning doesn't happen, then the 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 entire yeah, all the nutrition and everything goes into that area, um, and you know maybe it puts out more leaves or whatever, but then the fruit doesn't show up, right? So all the energy, everything goes in. So practically in our life, we can say that okay, in in terms of distractions, in terms of maybe um, misdirected efforts. Right, so you know, and we practically look at it. These are areas that um, the Lord actually directs, and He says, "Okay, I need to take that out." Right, so He could do it sovereignly. He could do it with our cooperation. He just says, "Hey, this is not really, you know, uh, uh, good use of your time, right? Good use of your resources, because it's 
you know, you're, you know, you know, you're putting all your time, energy, and everything, but it's not really being effective, right? You're not really producing what you should be producing, and so the Lord prunes, okay. And we look at pruning as a very painful thing in our lives. Normally, you know, that's how we look at it, right? So, you know, whatever I, I'm enjoying, suddenly, duck, it's gone, and God is, you know, like cutting it off and saying, okay. I'm doing it for your good. Don't worry. You know that. But the thing is, um, uh, it, it's it's to make us more productive. And it's yes, in a way, it seems like a loss because it's dealing with maybe things of the flesh, right? Things that are counterproductive. But it's making us fruitful, and we realize it um, because fruit is seen, right? Fruit will be seen. It's not like it's. It's not going to be, you know, it's barren forever and ever. Fruit will be seen. And though so, so immediately we realize, hey, it was this was good. Right? It's tangible. Okay, so the, the whole thing is that God wants our lives to be fruitful, to be productive. And he does these things, these adjustments, so that we can be fruitful. Okay. Um, so when it comes to our lives as leaders, we our lives need to be, you know, in other words, productive, right? Effective, right? Um, so, uh, from the spiritual aspect, from you know, from how we live our life, whatever we are doing, maybe as a working professional, maybe as a you know business person, um, you know, it's it's not a wrong expectation to say that my life needs to be productive. Okay, because the minute we say, okay. Where is the productivity? We think, okay, this is worldly. Right? This is a worldly expectation, you know, targets, deadlines, um, you know, performance review, a worldly expectation. You know, I just need to just go through life. You know? But the thing is, what is the father saying? You know, what is the gardener, wine dresser doing? He's coming and he's saying, is there fruit? Okay, so when when it comes to productivity, practically speaking, you know, when, when which means that our lives need to be ex, uh, efficient. Okay, it means that our output, uh, the productivity, it depends on what kind of input we are, uh, what kind of effort, what the quality of effort, the quantity of effort that we are putting into a task. Okay, for example, studies. Okay, studies. If you need to be productive. It doesn't matter if I'm sitting with a book for five hours, right? It doesn't matter. At the end of it, if it's not really productive, useful, right? Because um, why do I say that? I used to do that. You know, uh, in school, college, you know, somewhere I'm satisfied. Oh, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting with a book. But my mind is somewhere. I'm not really doing that intense study that I'm supposed to not retaining anything, just going anywhere, but I'm sitting with the book. It doesn't help, right? So it means, okay, it's it's the kind of effort, the quality, quantum of effort, and the quality. You know, is it like intense? It is without distraction. It is focused, right? So, so also for every task that we're doing, okay, to just ask ourselves, you know, what is the effort that I'm putting in, right? What is the effort? Is it going to be? Is it going to result in effectiveness? Otherwise, we need to really question, because you know, let's say we put in some kind of, let's say, effort. We call it effort A, okay? Which means certain kind of effort, certain things, certain strategy. We put in effort A, and we we got the result. Result is B, okay? Now, if we want result like two B or three B, three times that. Or four times that. Can I put in the same effort? It has to be different. It has to be slightly, maybe marginally different, in order to get a, you know, maybe increased result. Right? I can't put, you know, I can't put in the same effort. Right? Maybe it has to have something to do with increased time, or it has something to do with something, some difference. Right? So, um, so we need to ask and question that, you know, as a leader, if I need to be productive, uh, what changes do I have to make in my efforts, right? And what is going into that work, right? 
it could be in leader, leading the team it could be in you know whatever we are doing spiritually what what changes are we making okay here are some things that we can look at okay when it comes to increased efficiency leading to productivity right um first thing is to organize okay how organized we are you know we looked at organizing people organizing uh, our time organizing our schedule everything organizing finances right so how organized are we okay so um when we organize like for example organizing of uh, of our uh, of our work itself okay um a simple thing would be um, you know things in your on your notepad or on your laptop you know is everything all over the place or is it in folders right so if it is in a folder what advantage is that yeah so so which means they are being eff effective in in the use of your time right you are you're able to access it and uh, retrieve information quickly right so if you if you need to if you're going to search for 10 minutes to you know to access something that you put in just a week ago then that's not a good use of a time right okay then secondly one is to organize second one is to reuse okay so what do we mean by that to reuse for efficiency huh how how do you think that can be practically possible in whatever you are doing copy we can no recycling is uh, okay you're not wasting something you're actually putting it to a different process so that it can come out in a different way i mean that that also Mm -hmm. and then we know how to do better mm -hmm. because uh, we are reusing things we might have filled it in the first okay uh yeah. this is you want to use that yeah yeah failed or was it successful if we are failed then we we, we, might, we can better do do in a better way true we are using the same thing mm. okay yeah so the thing is uh, you know if it's um, reuse it's it's mainly if it's if it's good like if it, if something is not good then you won't actually do the same thing you will do it things differently right so um so you let's say you did something and it and was effective it was successful and you use that again use that model again use that pattern again um you know some things like okay let's say um the the, the song lists that you prepare okay or the song sheets or the song database that you prepare you reuse it right you put it in a database and you reuse it you put it in a place that is safe and you reuse it right uh sermons for example so it it is when we you know it it is effective effective use of our time so you don't have to actually download every time from the internet right a simple example is like the songs that we use for maybe your uh, afternoon time of worship and so you, if it's in a place where you know you can access it you don't have to uh, yeah, sorry yeah the lyrics the song words yeah so you don't have to again go through the whole process of taking it downloading it typing it changing it etc so, so that's a simple thing so uh, and also you know if if there's any communication you know for example maybe there are letters to be sent right certain it has a certain format you're sending it to a person to welcome somebody um maybe to church or you're thanking somebody who has come to church right we can reuse that format you now it's it helps okay um work ahead of time third thing okay work ahead of time um time box your work what does that mean okay one is to plan ahead okay 
like we said, organizing our schedules. You plan ahead, um, well ahead. And when we work ahead of time, you know, the advantage is that we're able to think through clearly, okay, make less mistakes, um, invest sufficient time on that task. Okay, so it comes out in an excellent manner. You're able to think through deeply. But also at the same time, we need to time box in the sense, you know, certain tasks, let's say 10 tasks need to be done. Um, we need to give each task some amount of time okay, that you know, you set it. Okay? okay, This is the time that I'm going to set for this particular task. Okay, Why is that necessary? Hmm. I'll tell you one example. Okay, uh, I was doing my um, uh, like my management course. Uh, I failed in one subject, accounts, first semester. Okay, so I had to take it as an area in the last semester. Okay. Now, last semester I went and uh, I sat. I attempted one. The first I started with the first question, and I I didn't realize I was spending so much time on almost one. I think one hour, close to one hour, 45 minutes on just that one section. Okay. And then I realized, hey, I've got, that's it. Yeah, I've got the remaining amount of time. This is what I have. And I have the entire question paper to finish. Okay. And I was panicking and I was rushing through and I don't know what happened. And uh, I was just praying, God, somehow, you know, I need to go to get through this. Right. So with that in mind, what is time boxing? How does it help? In order to yeah, in order to complete the whole thing, right? If your whole work involves, let's say, ten different things that you need to do, okay. When we time box and say, okay, this particular task, I'm going to give it so much time, okay, maybe twenty minutes, maybe one hour. It's going to take one hour for this particular task. When we put that, maybe we can even set a you know timer that will help us, enable us to plan things well so that we can complete it. So same thing like when you want to preach, when you're preaching, right? You need to pace your message in such a way you complete it, right? You have only maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Now, if you're going to, you know, if you have five points and if you're going to spend a whole lot of things on the you know second point because you like it so much right you like it so much you want to spend so much time then you will not have time to complete the study that you actually plan so okay so um there are there are different tools that help um help us uh, i just thought i'll share one particular thing um you know we looked at uh, the to do list right um let me show Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let me just share this. One second. Um, now, can you see what I'm sharing? Yeah. It's called the 18 minutes template. Okay. So this actually um, talks about a, a to-do list. Okay, this is step one. Okay, sit down with your to-do list, and it's actually um, a box of six main things. Okay, so see when we when we look at a let's say a, a list to-do list that you want. I think Francis needs to see it now. Okay. Um, you're saying okay. Okay, so if you, if you look at the to do list, it, it's one thing, right? You have got some maybe six tasks, seven tasks, eight tasks to do. Okay, but what if uh, you have multiple areas, multiple responsibilities? Okay, like um, for example, if uh, okay, I'm just looking at my my role. Okay, here at APC, so I come here and I teach in the Bible College. Okay, so that's one one box, one area, okay? 
so with that in that there there might be a few things preparing for class preparing question papers uh, maybe you know several things like that in one box another area could be um what what else do i do ella <laughs> i'll ask you <laughs> okay member care okay so in member care there could be a few other things okay uh like people to be contacted uh maybe some uh, you know pe some people have requested some letters administrative letters uh maybe uh, in that there could also be people who have requested marriage preparation okay and there could be people who have uh, requested for maybe a house visit okay so that's member care okay then what else third area huh ah pastoral team yeah i'm part of it uh okay let's say life coaching okay life coaching is one okay there there could be some some things very with that maybe queries that are sent people want to be connected um with the mentor they have some you know they want to know okay what life coaching is etc okay then what else three areas okay maybe i'm leading worship on a particular sunday so preparing for that sending the song list out scheduling the you know uh, rehearsal booking the you know the jam room okay for that particular sunday everything that's one area okay four areas what else huh <laughs> no we talking only about work okay yeah maybe one, one box can be personal personal thing bills to be paid uh you know errands to be done clothes to be given for ironing okay whatever things to be bought okay so we have these these boxes okay so so this is what we see okay take 5 minutes okay decide what will make this day highly effective okay um take things off your to do list and schedule them for today okay then step 2 is to refocus 1 minute every hour okay now now this is this is something by uh, bergman peter bergman and he does this he's the one who came out with that that you know that box to do list so you can set your phone set your uh, timer and say okay take a minute to check every hour in this list that i'm doing is everything doing what needs to be done okay uh, am i being who i want to be right now okay so every hour so if you're going to be spending 8 um, 8 hours or 9 hours at work typically 8 hours right so 8 minutes you spend on that right and then in the evening when you finishing everything take 5 minutes to review okay so here are some questions how did my day go what success did i experience what challenges did i endure what did i learn today about myself about others what i plan to do differently who did i interact with anyone i need to update thank ask a question share feedback with okay so it's the end of the day okay so how many minutes are spent in that 5 minutes in that task okay but totally 8 plus 5 13 and then you start with 5 minutes right yeah so 18 minutes so he calls it the 18 minute um planning or 18 minutes uh, to do list so he calls it right so so it's not one list but it's multiple lists you know short lists but uh, you you try and do this and there are other tools also uh, just stop share there are other tools also where you know people uh, they talk about a promodor i think i don't know whether it's called a promodor list or promodor task okay which means that every 25 minutes or 20 minutes uh, i think it's 20 minutes you take a break for 5 minutes okay so you give that task 20 minutes full attention no distraction high intensity you're completely there okay 20 minutes but you take a break the f- after 20 minutes okay so several ways by which you can um, make your work effective and especially this time boxing and uh, you know that really helps right okay um 
Okay, one last thing is that you do your most important work during the best working hours. Okay, so it differs from people to people. Some people are very energetic in the morning. Okay, some people are very energetic in the evening. Okay, but you need to do your most important work. Whatever you, whatever the most important could be. Okay, this is the important thing. This is the challenging thing. It need not be the most enjoyable work. Okay, it need not be the thing that you enjoy, but it's it's an important work, and you need to do it. Maybe you enjoy, you know, doing certain things, and and normally our human tendency is, we give that a lot of time, what we enjoy. Okay, but um, this is something that we need to do. Okay, the most challenging, the most important thing, give it your best time of day. Okay, okay, we'll stop here. God bless. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it on the stream. Okay, thank you.